The M18 Hellcat, or as it was officially called, the 76mm gun motor carriage M18, was a late arrival of World War II, but it still had a great service history, and it was a great tool for the Allies. Many people liked these agile vehicles, and so did the troops back in the day. The M18 was a product of the armored doctrine of the US Army at the time. This doctrine mainly looked at tanks as infantry support and breakthrough weapons, and in case of an enemy armored attack, relied on designated tank destroyer forces to repair the enemy. The tank destroyers meant to be less armored than the tanks, but faster and equipped with a powerful gun, so they can relocate quickly and ambush the enemy armored forces. They were not meant to engage the enemy tanks in direct fight, but rely on their speed to ambush them. I have talked about this tank destroyer doctrine in my earlier M10 video, so if you're interested in the topic and haven't seen that yet, I recommend you watch it. See the link in the description. The US Army at the beginning of the war didn't have really effective tank destroyer vehicles. They designed vehicles from available resources. This is how they created the M6 gun motor carriage, which was a Dodge truck equipped with a 37mm gun, and the M3 gun motor carriage, which was an M3 half truck mounting the M1879 75mm gun. These vehicles were successful at the beginning of the war, but they had their shortcomings, so the army immediately after fielding these started to look for a replacement. One of the purpose-built tank destroyers was the M10, officially 3-inch gun motor carriage M10, but those vehicles used the Sherman chassis, so they weren't particularly light or fast. They could be fielded fairly quickly though, because they were built on an existing chassis. At the same time, parallel to the development of the M10, another project was on the way for a fast tank destroyer, but that was a fully new design and this is the project which in the end became the M18 Hellcat. In December 1941, the Ordnance Department set new specifications for a new fast tank destroyer. Initially, the specifications asked for a Christie suspension, a right radial engine, and a 37mm gun on the chassis of the light airborne tank T9, the one which will become the M22 Locust later. The project was named 37mm gun motor carriage T42. To simplify things, I will just call this GMC in the future. In 1942, experiences showed that the 37mm gun was not powerful enough anymore, so the army changed the specification to 57mm gun and coil spring suspension, and two prototypes were ordered as 57mm GMC T49. While the work was done on the prototypes, the gun specifications changed again, as it was decided there's no point building a tank destroyer with a smaller gun than the tanks. So the second prototype was built with the M3 75mm gun. This was the same gun that was used on the Sherman tanks, and this prototype became the 75mm GMC T67. The prototypes went through the normal testing, and in conclusion it was decided they need a more powerful engine, and the tank force was also interested in the new 76mm gun developed at that time. Based on the experiences with the T67 and T49 prototypes, new specifications were laid down for another vehicle. This time the specifications called for a 76mm gun in a new turret, a more powerful engine and a torsion bar suspension. This was called the 76mm GMC T70. Six pilot vehicles were ordered and the first one was delivered in April 1943. If we look at the picture of the T70, we can see they had a winner there. The T-70 prototype became the M-18 Hellcat, after some minor modifications. The designer of the M-18 was Harley G. Earl. You might already know some of his later creations, and most famous of them all, the Corvette, the number one American sports car. The T-70 performed well in the tests. It had some minor problems with the engine and transmission, but these were modified before production. In its production version, the M18 featured armor thickness between 0.2 and 1 inch. The armor thickness on the hull was half an inch thick all around, just like the turret sides. The front of the turret was the most armored part of the vehicle, with 1 inch armor thickness. It was powered by a Continental R975 radial engine, producing 400 horsepower, which made the 18-ton vehicle quite agile. The maximum speed was 50 miles an hour on road and 18 miles an hour off road. The vehicle's armament featured the 76mm M1A1 gun and a 50 caliber machine gun on the top. 
its turret had electric drive, which was a big difference compared to the manually operated turret on the M10 tank destroyer. The M18 was faster and more agile than the other tank destroyers based on the Sherman chassis, but it traded armor protection for its speed. The thin armor only protected against small arms fire. When it was suggested to use the vehicle in the light tank role, a test showed that about one third of 30 caliber bullets aimed at the side of the turret penetrated from a range of 75 yards. The open top turret was another weakness, which exposed the crew to snipers and shell fragments, but it gave them good visibility, which was more important than fighting tanks. The M18 had some very interesting experimental variants, and I think they were to look, because most people don't know about them. Late in the war, the army experimented mounting an M36 Jackson turret with a 90mm gun on the M18 hull, which was a promising plan, but it was cancelled at the end of the war. The T-88 105mm howitzer motor carriage was an experiment mounting a 105mm M4 howitzer. This was a fairly easy conversion. It was followed by the T-88 E1 model, which mounted the T-51 lightweight 105mm howitzer. Both of these were also cancelled at the end of the war. The T-86 and T-87 experimental prototypes were amphibious versions based on the M18 chassis. The T-86 version mounted the standard 76mm gun and in the water used its tracks for propulsion. The T-86 E1 variant used propellers. The T-87 amphibious variant was based on the 105mm howitzer motor carriage, but otherwise it was similar to the T-86 variant. The M39 armored utility vehicle was developed in 1944, when two M18s were converted to prime movers. First called T41 and T41E1, depending on their configurations, and later standardized as M39. These vehicles served in the Korean War as well. The first field testing of the vehicle happened in spring 1944, when five T-70 prototypes were sent to Italy and saw combat at the Anzio beachhead. The first impressions were very good, especially on the vehicle speed and the firepower with the 76mm gun. Some negativity was felt towards the thin armor and the small internal space. When the M18 started shipping to Europe, General Brady didn't want them. He opted for the M10 and arriving M36 Jackson tank destroyers for his units. So the three initial M18 battalions were assigned under General Patton. In September 1944, in the Battle of Arakur, the 704th Tank Destroyer Battalion knocked out 39 German tanks and only lost four M18s. The speed of the M18 was put to good use a bit later in the Battle of the Bulge. On 20th of December 1944, when the German 2nd Panzer Division pushed forward with the target of capture fuel depots north of Bastogne, the American forces used the M18's speed to get ahead of the enemy and attack them. The M18s were well received at the front, the crews loved its high mobility and quick turret travels. The M18 tank destroyers served on the Pacific as well, fighting on the Philippines, Okinawa and in the Battle of Manila. After World War II, the US Army only used one variation of the M18 in the Korean War, the M39 armored utility vehicle, which we mentioned earlier. Most of the M18s in Europe were sold to Allied countries after the end of the war. Yugoslavia received 260 M18s, Greece also received 127 units, some of them stayed in service until the 1960s. The M18 was a good addition to the Allied forces, Although it arrived late in the war, it made quite an impression. Some say it was the only real tank destroyer that fit the early doctrine of fast, lightly armored vehicles. Also here's a treat for you at the end of the video, so don't go anywhere. Original video footage of the M18 compared to the T-28 super heavy tank. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a like and in the comments let me know if there's any interesting events or vehicles you'd like to see.